I know that you love to play and practice your flute. It's the reason you're probably watching this video in the first place, but we also all know that practicing can be really frustrating. frustrating. And so today we're going to be looking at five simple tips to help you practice better. Now, for those of you that have been around on this channel for a little while, you know that this was one of my first video topics ever. In fact, I think it was my very morning, first everyone, video. And welcome to the flute practice. This oh, morning, that's I'm hard to watch. Flute. It's good to know that even I have learned and grown over the last four years. If you are new to this channel, well, welcome. This is the flute practice it's a space to really help guide and motivate you on your practice journey. So let's dive right in. Tip number one, get organized. I've said this before and I'll say it a million times again, getting organized in your practice before you start is so important. Set up your space, have a nice space with everything you need. Make sure you have your metronome present with your pencil and maybe a nice notebook. Make sure you have all the books available to you that you need for your practice session. This is not just about being kind of mentally prepared to practice. This is also really about not wasting time. If you're scrambling around looking for your pencil, looking for your notebook, maybe trying to find music books, you are wasting time that you're probably going to get demotivated and just not do the important things like mark your music or use your metronome. So having them there ready to go means you're more likely to use them and you're going to be more efficient with your practice. My advice is why not spend a little bit of time making a beautiful space? Why not really create a special space in your house where you're really going to focus on practicing in that space. Maybe write some nice motivational things on the walls or on your music stand, put up stuff that's really gonna keep you inspired and motivated. Have a nice bookshelf with all your music books and all the kind of tools and accessories that you need for your practice. Remember, this is your special time. This is your break from the craziness of life and your moment to just really connect with something that you deeply enjoy. So give it what it deserves and really create a special space for it. Point number two is plan and set goals. When I speak about setting goals, I'm speaking about setting SMART goals. So SMART standing for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time bound. Specific. Make your goal really specific. Don't just say, I want to improve my playing. What do you want to improve? I want to improve my sound. Exactly what do I want to improve? I want to improve the high register, the fullness of the high register. Very specific goal. Measurable is always a challenging one for musicians because how do you measure this incredibly intangible thing called music? But you want to kind of allow yourself a space to see progress in your goal. So saying to improve your playing, again, is not going to be measurable. How do you measure that? So the more specific your goal is, the more you can measure it. I want to learn five lines of this piece. Once you've learned your five lines, you're like, cool, I've achieved my goal. Achievable, makes sense, right? You're not gonna play Mozart concerto in a week. Don't try to do it. Set some small goals that you know you can achieve and then see if you can start tackling a few bigger goals that might be a little more challenging. Relevant, this could be interpreted in a few ways. Obviously make it relevant to your flute playing. You know, you're not going to necessarily become a better person by playing the flute, although I like to believe you might, you might just. But it could also be relevant to where you are and what circumstances you are in. So for example, if you are an adult beginner, you've just started learning the flute, Chances are a goal that is not relevant to you is being able to play professionally in a symphony orchestra. <gasps> I hate to tell you this, but that's probably not going to happen. Maybe. I'm not going to say that not all things are possible because, well, I guess not all things are possible. But a perfectly healthy, relevant goal would be to say, I want to be able to play a piece of music beautifully with a good sound and good expression. The last one is super duper 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 important. Make your goals time bound. Do not give yourself an indefinite amount of time to achieve your goals because you probably won't achieve those goals. For example, you can say to yourself, okay, I want to learn five lines of my piece today. Give yourself 30 minutes to do it. The truth is, if you don't learn it in that time frame, if you, you know, you go over that time or you get to the end of your 30 minutes and you realize, ah, oh, I haven't learned my five lines. You then go back to the drawing board. Either your goal was unrealistic, it wasn't achievable, or you weren't working efficiently enough. 
Either way, tomorrow you're either going to set a slightly more realistic goal, three lines, that's realistic, or you're going to start to work better. You're going to stop just playing through things randomly and over and over and over again, hoping it'll get better. You're actually going to start working. Once you've set your goals, you now want to focus on how you're going to achieve those goals. And for that, you want to create a plan. You want to have some kind of a plan or strategy how you're going to achieve that goal. I need to learn an etude by next week in my lesson. I've got 20 lines to learn. I'm going to break it up every day. I'm going to do six lines. One day I might do seven lines or two days I might do seven lines. And then the next three days I'm going to work to kind of sew it all together, put it all together. The last day I'm going to practice just performing and playing it all the way through. There is nothing more demotivating than just kind of starting to play and having no idea what you're doing. You're going to waste your time. You're going to work inefficiently and you're probably going to quit pretty soon. Number three, really, really, really important. Get rid of distractions. Switch off your phone, switch off your television, switch off your laptop, your iPad, your tablet, whatever it is, switch it off. I want to say to all you moms out there, switch off your kids, but I know that that's not possible, but try to really get rid of distractions, even if it's just 20 minutes a day. Your practicing is going to be grateful. You are going to start working more efficiently because if you really cut out the world for those 20 minutes and that's all you're getting, you're going to really want to use those 20 minutes well. Again, you love this instrument. It is worth your time to just carve out a distraction-free moment in your day. I know some of us have like our metronomes and our tuning apps and everything on our phone or we're working with different apps. If you can, put your phone on flight mode. That's a great solution. Or get good old school metronomes and rather work with those. Number four, really important point, take breaks. Take breaks. I'm going to say that again. Take a break. It is okay to rest. It is important and essential to rest. You should rest every sort of 25 to 30 minutes if possible in your practicing. Don't practice for two to three hours in one go and then wonder why you're exhausted, tired and possibly even a little bit sore. Your brain needs time to recharge. Your body needs time to recharge. And I promise you, you're going to be more efficient and effective if you take breaks. Sometimes it's not so much just about taking a total break, but rather balancing kind of work and play or playing beautiful melodies and then playing kind of more technical, hectic stuff. So it's about balancing out your practice and not just always kind of go, 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 go. Also not always just being like, yay, let's just have fun and, you know, do what I want and never practice. That's not it either. But don't feel guilty for taking breaks. Even if you take a week off, take it. Trust me take it. You will feel better after that break. If you need a break, if your body is saying rest, listen to your body. Number five, stay accountable. This has so many levels and layers to it, but really important when you're doing any kind of work or you're trying to improve or progress is to stay accountable to someone. That might be a teacher, the most obvious choice. So having a lesson, staying accountable to someone. But one of the most amazing ways that we can stay accountable these days is online. There are a bunch of possibilities to stay accountable to someone online, whether it's online lessons, whether it's kind of Facebook communities and groups, there are a bunch of them. Or you could join our Patreon live Zoom events. There are a couple of them. There are performance classes, which is, yes, about performing, which might sound terrible to some of you, but it's about so much more than that. It's really about sharing your journey and your process with a group of really encouraging and supportive flutists who really are going through the same struggles as you. It's a great space to, on a bi-monthly basis, come into the group, perform, and get some feedback on your playing and your progress. You could also join the technique classes. This is a little bit more specifically kind of digging into different technical aspects on the flute where you're kind of working on improving your flute playing. But again, it's a really wonderful supportive community. You're all learning and growing together. And I can tell you, this community has really become like a small flute family. They have become incredibly special to me and to each other. Friendships have formed. 
across the world from like Australia to the US to Europe to well I'm down in the bottom of Africa so if you really are looking for a family a home a space to be held accountable and to really grow then I'm going to encourage you to go check out Patreon. You can also send me an email directly and find out how you can get involved in this. Keep doing what you love and I will see you guys next time.